Hi guys, welcome back to another Unity Touch tutorial. My name is Devin, and today we're going to be creating a touch joystick in Unity 5, as well as this floaty space player controller thing. Now, I've made a previous video on this subject of how to make touch joysticks in Unity 4.6 using the standard assets. Also in that video, we made a first-person camera controller using two touch joysticks. So if that interests you, you should go check that video out. But if you just care about getting a touch joystick on your screen, uh, you should watch this video first, because in this video we use the latest and greatest Unity 5 standard assets as our starting point. However, if you've already seen the 4.6 video and your virtual joysticks are working fine, you got everything working how you want, you don't care about seeing the joystick again, and you just want to see this floaty space player controller, then go ahead and click this button. It'll skip all the joystick stuff and put you right at the player controller. But if this is your first time making a joystick, or you want to redo your touch joysticks in Unity 5, then just keep watching. You don't need to click anything. Unless, of course, you want to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, all that stuff, or my website, devination.com. Then you go ahead and click this button. Awesome! Now that you click that, let's get started. Alright, so we're going to start with the cross-platform input that comes as part of the standard assets in Unity 5. You can access it by going to Assets, Import Package, Cross-Platform Input. If you can't find it in here, you could also go to the Unity Asset Store and just go to the Unity Technologies official webpage, or marketplace page, uh, click on the Standard Assets, and download it or import. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and import that. And I'm only going to need a few things from here, so I'm going to click None. I'm going to want to get the Cross-Platform Input folder in the Editor folder. I uh, won't need any of these. And cross-platform input. So that's all I need, the cross-platform input folder here and here. So just grab those two folders and hit import. Also, if you're having any trouble um, you know, dealing with this importing business, I'll upload a final package of uh, this whole finished scene on my website, devination.com, so you can download it and have exactly what we have by the end of this tutorial. All right, so now that we have that, let's go ahead and open the standard assets prefabs folder and pull in the mobile single stick control. Now, once you drop it in, you'll notice that nothing happens. Um, and if you unroll this, this is actually a canvas game object, and it's got some buttons in here and they're disabled, and they're not able to turn on. Uh, what you'll have to do is first you'll have to open the build settings with Control shift b uh, and make sure you're on a uh, mobile platform, so Android or iOS. And we can close that, and you see they pop up right away. Um, if they don't, make sure that you have your mobile input set to enable. Now these guys aren't going to be able to do anything. See, if we click and drag, nothing's going to happen unless we add in a UI event system. So be sure that's somewhere in your scene, and then you hit play, and you'll be able to move this joystick. Uh, so right now you'll notice that it's kind of snapping down there in the corner. That's not what we want to happen. Um, so let's go ahead and fix that right now. If we go to the mobile joystick, and open up the joystick script, you can see that there's this on enable function. And for some reason that's not triggering, so what I like to do is I just like to set that to start. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and comment my changes that I make with dcurry just for future reference so I know what I modified from the standard assets. Uh, so now that we set that to start, it should uh, pick up the start position and use that uh, correctly. Now if I hit play and move this around, you see that it kind of sticks where it should. Also it's... Uh, well you'll notice two things. It's First off it's going in a square and it's kind of getting cut off right there. First off the cutoff bit, we could change this movement range to be something smaller, say 50, and now it won't get cut off. And the square bit we'll have to change in code. So let's go back to our script and I know that somewhere it's using clamp so here it is clamp uh, we don't want to use these uh, because these are clamping the X and the Y on individual axes so it's you know it's gonna clamp on the Y individually and then the X individually it's not gonna check for the overall distance from the center 
Uh, let me mark these with dcurry again. So instead of clamping these individual axes, we're going to want to use clamp magnitude on this entire vector. Uh, so I'm going to say vector 3 dot clamp magnitude and it takes a vector 3 along with a max length. So this will be our vector 3 right here. And our max length will be our movement range. So let's put that there. And actually we don't want to add the start position and the new position right here. Instead we're only going to want to keep track of the new positions and then add the entire um, start position vector after we do the clamp magnitude. Because if we do the clamp magnitude after we've added these things, it's going to clamp it down to a value between negative 1 and 1, which we don't want. We want it to be, we want this part to be negative 1 and 1, uh, and then just add it to whatever the start position was. So let's go ahead and remove all those parts. Start position, start position, and start position. And then outside of the clamp is where we're going to add the start position. So now if we go back to Unity, and hit play, we're getting clamped in a circle. So that's exactly what we want. Great. Now that concludes the uh, setting up the joysticks part. So if that's all you came for, you could close the video now. You're done. Uh, don't forget to go to my website, definition.com. But other than that, you're done. So now let's go ahead and make, these joyst make this joystick and this button actually do something. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and create a cube right now. Put it at 0, 0, 0. I'm going to make it a 2D thing. So let's give it a box collider 2D and a rigid body 2D. And we're just going to push this rigid body around with force depending on where the joystick is pointed. Um, I don't want it to be pushed by gravity. So I'm going to set that to 0. Set the gravity scale to 0. And uh, I don't want this button to be called jump button. I want it to be a boost button. So let's call it boost button. Well, that didn't stick. Boost. And the text, uh, which isn't showing because our font is missing. Let's just add that font back in and make it a darker color so we can actually see it. And instead of saying jump, we're going to say boost. Alright, so that's good. Uh, now, let's go ahead and create our player controller. I'm going to call this floating player 2D controller. And I'm going to drag that onto the cube. And let's rename the cube player. And let's open that up. Let's do some quick syntax stuff right here. All right. Uh, so we're going to want a few things in here. We're going to first want a rigid body 2D. We're going to call it my body. And this will just be the rigid body that is on this cube component. So let's say my body is equal to this dot get component rigid body 2D. Next, let's also give him a public float. Uh, let's call it move force and let's set it to 5 for now and let's give him one more float called boost multiplier and let's set that to 2 so basically the move force is just going to be the regular force that pushes our guy along when we move the joystick and the boost multiplier is going to be uh, how much this value is multiplied whenever we have the boost button held down uh, and since this thing's going to be physics based, I'm going to change this from update to fixed update. So we're not doing too many physics calculations. And uh, let me zoom in here so you can see that a little better. Alright, so in here we're going to want to find our uh, move vector, which is going to be a vector 2, and we'll call it move vec. It's going to equal a new vector 2, and this is where we're actually going to uh, use the joystick. So. In order to use the joystick, we're going to need to do a few things. 
first off, if we go back to the joystick script, you can see that this is in a namespace, Unity Standard Assets Cross-Platform Input. Let me scroll in so you can read that. So since it's in a namespace, we're going to need to use this namespace in order to access the virtual joystick. So up here, back in our player controller script, we're going to type in using the standard assets dot cross platform input, uh, and then what that will allow us to do is we'll be able to use cross platform input dot whatever functions it has. Oh, sorry, it's cross platform input manager. Forgot about that. Uh, and then now that we hit dot, we'll have access to all of its functions. So what we want to get is get access. Uh, and this will look familiar once I do this, get access horizontal. Uh, so if you worked with Unity before, you've probably seen people do this, or you've probably done this. Input dot get access, and then horizontal, vertical, whatever. Uh, this is pretty much the same thing, except it's a specialized version uh, from our standard assets package that we imported. And what it'll do is it'll read it from these touch joysticks firstly, and if these touch joysticks aren't available, then it will default back to the regular input dot get access horizontal. And we have access to get access horizontal because on this particular joystick it has two axes. It's got horizontal and vertical. If we name this to, say, apples, then we would have to rename this to apples as well. But, you know, let's keep it horizontal to make sense. Uh, so we're going to want to get that for the x-axis of our move vector. And for our vertical, we're going to want to get, or for our y-axis, we're going to want to get vertical. Uh, and then after all of that, let's also just multiply it by our move force. OK, so that line got a little long. It, you could see it better if you're not zoomed in as much as I am. But let's go ahead and add in the uh, sprint button. So let's also use a, let's create a bool for this and we'll call it is sprinting. Or rather is boosting, because it's a boost button, not a sprint button. And that's going to equal cross platform input manager dot get button. And this is going to see if the button is down uh, on this frame. And if it is, then it's going to return true. Uh, and let's see what our button is named. So it's named jump. I'm going to go ahead and rename that to boost. So in here we could type in boost. And lastly, let's go ahead and add our move vector as a force to our rigid body. So in here we're going to just add the move vector force. Uh, now to work in the sprinting, we're going to do something pretty cool here. We're going to do a single line if else statement using the conditional operator. So the conditional operator looks something like this. Uh, okay, let me do it in a debug.log so we can visualize it first. So the conditional operator is going to take a condition like is boosting. It's going to be either true or false. And we say, is it boosting? True or false? I don't know. If it's true, then we want to use this value. If it's false, then we want to use that value. So we take a condition, we ask if it's true or false. If it is, we take whatever is on the left of the colon. And if it's false, then we take whatever is on the right. And I'm just going to plug that in right here. So pretty much. Every frame we're going to add force in the move vector, which is where our uh, joystick is pointing, uh, multiplied by our move force, our default move force. And then we're going to either multiply it by 0, or multiply it by 1 if we're not pressing the boost button, or we're going to multiply it by the multiplier if we are pressing the boost button. Uh, so let's go ahead and hit play. And down here in the debug window, you can see we get a bunch of ones. If I hold down the boost button, we get a bunch of twos. So that's what it's going to be, either one or two. All right. And if I drag this around, you can see our cube starts to move around. Uh, and he starts to, you know, he floats for a while. Uh, now in asteroids, I want to, I want to kind of mimic it a little bit better. Uh, like it's, it, this is not a perfect asteroids, but going to be somewhat similar. Uh, so he just, he'll just he just drift forever. We're going to want to uh, have him slow down a little bit and come to a stop 
kind of more like Asteroids does. Uh, so to do that, go to the player object, go to his rigid body 2D component, and here you'll see a property called linear drag. Let's just increase that to one. You could increase it to whatever. Uh, and now if we start to move and let go, you see he slows down until he eventually stops. And that's kind of more what I want. Uh, all right, so I have a mouse, um, so I can't really hit the boost button to try that out. Since I only have one input device, the mouse, you know, I don't have two mice on the screen at once. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and build this level to my actual Android and show you how it works. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to want to go to the uh, canvas object or our mobile, uh, mobile single stick control, which has our canvas uh, component on it. And I'm going to want to add a canvas scaler component um, and have it scale with the screen size. Uh, so if, if I don't have this, then my controls might be really small on the screen or too big. Uh, you, we won't know. But you know, if we have this scaler on, then it will scale and always be on screen. Uh, so yeah, that's all set up. Let me hit save and add this scene and build it. And I'll show you it when it's done. Here we go. We got it built on Android. Uh, so let's show this thing off. All right, if I pull on the joystick, he'll start to move. And if I let go, he'll eventually come to a stop because we added that linear drag. Uh, now for the boost, I actually increase it from 2 to 10 because 2 wasn't quite showing it off and I think 10 might be a little too much, but at least you'll be able to see what happens. All right, so if I start pulling on the joystick, he'll move. And now if I hit boost, Whoop, there he goes. Uh, so there we go. We can move and hit boost at the same time. Uh, that's all I got for now. I hope this video was helpful. Be sure to like and subscribe if it was. Uh, don't forget, you could download the package for everything that we did on my website, devonation.com. Uh, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, all that stuff. Uh, and yeah, that's all I got for now. So thank you again so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.